Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. It's now time for the featured bout of the evening. From the four corners of the world, to the four corners of this ring, the fight starts now! Welcome to the drum at Wembley, just a stone's throw away from where all the action will take place just over 24 hours away from now, live on the zone. Katie Taylor defends her undisputed lightweight world championships against 19-0 Karen Carabayal from Argentina. Eight fights on the undercard, all leading up to their big main event that is roughly 20 past 10 ring walks expected on Saturday night local time in London. And Darren, you always know it's a big fight week because we've got some support out. We've got a few Johnny Fisher fans and we've got plenty of Katie Taylor fans in the house as well. Yep, yeah, it's uh, good to see. They they, they come out of full force, didn't they? Both both teams. But yeah, I've heard some of the uh, the Romford Army here. They've come out in. I think was it 2,000 tickets. He's done again. Still doing them right now. Got the, incredible. Got the, got the cab over with uh, some of Johnny's family, and, and they're still selling tickets uh, all the way up to fight night. And I'm sure there will be a few getting shifted tomorrow. And the action kicks off round about 4:45 on uh, YouTube on before the bell. Myself, Barry Jones, and Big Fabio Wardley will fight for a British title on the 26th of November. Um, we'll be calling in the action. Maisie Rose Courtney. Uh, fighter who is boxing uh, in your gym, of course, yep. under the guidance of Kevin Mitchell uh, in and around Tony Sims. Lads makes her debut, six national titles um, as an amateur, and uh, well, she's got, I think, a pretty exciting style that people are going to see tomorrow. Yeah, she's she's a handful. She's a lovely, lovely lady. But when that bell goes, whether it be sparring or the fight itself, she she means business. She really gets stuck in. She's uh, she's got a really fan friendly style, so she's going to be exciting to watch. Yeah, she had a four rounder um, Judy Hatchbowl, but that one may well as a float a little bit later on in the night. So she may be on before the bell, she may not. If not, John Hedges will be kicking off the action at 4.45 against uh, Alice Makovic, who, who's a decent fighter, actually. Southpaw, low crouch stance, loops the overhand left. He's a handy fighter. Uh, and a good test for John Hedges if he's going to look to get in the mix, potentially area title level, in the next six to eight months. Yeah, definitely. Look, Makovic, he's, he's unbeaten, so he's got that winning record. He's got that winning mentality. So it's another step for John Hedges. Suddenly gone eerily quiet behind us, which is usually an indication that something is about to kick off. We will, of course, be seeing all the fighters weighing in uh, this afternoon um, through all the undercard and the main event as well. Jordan Reynolds on the card after being out of, of action for a year with yet another bicep injury. Didn't have much luck in the amateurs and his bad luck has continued in the pros but he's looking forward to getting a move on uh, in against Jose Clavero uh, from Spain. Third on the bill, uh, on before the bell. Then Tom Whitaker Hart in area title action against a tough, solid season pro in Mickey Ellison. Uh, and for Whitaker Hart um, the, the trials and tribulations he's been through in the last 18 months, it's brilliant just to see him back in the ring and this is his first opportunity opportunity to prove that he could be a force at domestic level of life. Yeah, look, I, I think it's a step up for both of them, yeah. honest. I mean, Thomas Whitaker Hart is obviously stepping up, uh, facing a champion, if you like, Central Area champion, and Ellison, he's tough, he's a handful, he's physically strong, uh, tough, tough high guard, big puncher. So, yeah, Thomas Whitaker Hart I've been impressed with, so I look forward to the journey continuing. Well, that will take us through to the main uh, show, live on the zone, 7 o'clock, where Gary Cully will open proceedings. Uh, but right now, uh, before the bell fighters are ready to weigh in, here's Maisie Rose Courtney and Judy Hatchbold with David Dimmer. Well, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Wembley, London, England, for the official weigh-in for our big night of fights taking place here at the Wembley Arena on Saturday night. Now, it's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing, and all the action will go out live around the world exclusively on DAZN. We're sponsored by Betfred. FCI Markets, Stagefront, and JD Sports. It's a fabulous fight card. We have eight fights on the card. We've got four title fights. We have one world title eliminator and at the top of the bill, ladies and gentlemen, it's the lightweight undisputed championship of the world. So without further ado, let's go ahead and bring the fighters up to the stage at this time so they can face the scale and face each other. Our first contest, four rounds in the flyweight division. Now making her way to the stage from Hungary, 22 fight veteran, please welcome Judith Hackbold. Hackbold. And now ladies and gentlemen, her opponent making her way to the stage Saturday night 
She'll be turning over in her much anticipated professional debut. She's the six time national champion. Ladies and gentlemen, fighting out of Eltham, London, England. Please welcome for the first time to the stage as a professional, Maisie Rose. Rose. Now to the scale, Judith Hockwald. One eleven point one five for Judith Hockbold. One eleven point one five for Judith Hockbold. And now to the scales for the first time as a professional, Maisie Rose. One thirteen point five for Maisie Rose. One thirteen point five. Maisie Rose, Judith Hotbolt, four rounds, flyweights, Wembley, London, England, matchroom boxing live on the zone. It's like she's changing her mind halfway through, Chris. <laughs> That was a bit weird, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, normally we just ease you into the way, not today. I, I don't like you. I mean, I like you. Yeah, actually, should we shake hands? No, get off me. Um, anyway, basically, Rose Courtney and Judah Hatchwell. That's set things up nicely, isn't it, for tomorrow night? Uh, Big John Hedges will be up uh, after that. He's looking to go 7 0 oh, 1 of the guidance of Mark Tibbs. Of course, two fighters out uh, on Saturday night. Johnny Fisher uh, as well. Him and Aless Makovic are ready to weigh in. Let's hand you back over to David. Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest, six rounds in the light heavyweight division, now making his way to the stage. He's undefeated as a professional, three fights, three victories, two of them coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of the Czech Republic, please welcome Alice Makovic. Makovic. And his opponent now making his way to the stage. He's also undefeated as a professional. Six fights, six victories, two of them coming by way of knockout. Here is the four-time national champion and the seven-time international titleist fighting out of Takeley, England. Gentlemen, John J. Hedges. Hedges. Now to the scale, ladies and gentlemen, Alice Makovic. One hundred and eighty pounds and two ounces for Alice Makovic. One eighty point two for Alice Makovic. And now to the scale from Takeley, gentlemen, John J. Hedges. One eighty one point six, one hundred and eighty one pounds, six ounces, gentlemen, John J. Hedges.
Hedges versus Makovich, six rounds light heavyweights. Matchroom boxing live on the zone from London, England. Yeah, Alice Makovic, good opponent for uh, John Hedges. It's a kind of short, George Groves, Crouch style. Southpaw had a good uh, Southpaw tall opponent in a guy called Army Kovatsky in his last fight. So good preparation for this. And the first opponent that John Hedges really got to be switched on for. Yeah, he does, because Makovic likes to jump him with a big, wide, wild sort of right hook, yeah. lead right hook. Feet are crucial for this in Hedges. He's got to glide out of range, look for that counter. We know how good of a boxer he is, so he can make this an easy night if he, wa if he wants to. Yeah, scheduled for six rounds out, John Hedges and Alice Makovic, uh, first on before the bell. Then Jordan Reynolds um, returns to action for the first time in a year against Jose Clavero. He and the, his opponent are ready to win, so let's head you back to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest, six rounds in the middleweight division. Now making his way to the stage, presentando de Granada, Andalusia, España. Here is Jose Manuel Lopez Clavero. Clavero. And his opponent now making his way to the stage. He's undefeated as a professional. Three fights, three victories. One of them coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Luton, please welcome Jordan Reynolds. Reynolds. Now to the scale, ladies and gentlemen, Jose Manuel Lopez Clavero. One sixty one point three, one hundred and sixty one pounds, three ounces, Jose Manuel Lopez Clavero. And now to the scale, the undefeated man from Luton, please welcome Jordan Reynolds. One hundred and sixty three pounds and one ounce for the undefeated Jordan Reynolds. Reynolds v. Clavero. Six rounds, middleweights, matchroom boxing live on the zone. Wembley, London, England. So, uh, Jose Clarero, who you remember, was stopped by Janae Bostan uh, last time out, but he did go the distance with... Uh, it was one of the fail brothers. I can't remember if it was Ben or Carl. Of course, Jordan uh, Reynolds beat Ben Fail in the ABA Finals uh, 2018. So, it's a good kind of comeback opponent for him. He should look good in this one. Just to oil the wheels before some exactly serious competition that. next Dusted year. Exactly off the cobweb. It's been out a year to the day tomorrow. So excited to see Jordan up and running again. Yeah, a very, very good amateur. Was, uh, was in a very good ABA Final about three or four years ago with Ben Whitaker, of course, uh, Olympic silver medalist, uh, now up at uh, light heavyweight. Jordan Wren is one to watch for the future. 3 0 now, uh, looking to make a dent on the domestic scene in the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, as is Tom Whitaker Hart, who's had a real stop start career with uh, severe illness and, of course, the pandemic as well. He's uh, currently at 7 0, fighting for the Northern, uh, better the Central Area title against Mickey Ellison, who won it in really excellent fashion uh, last time out. Um, this is a really good and well timed test for, for Tom Whitaker Hart. Ellison has, has got the experience, very solid, textbook kind of British pro style yeah, yes. um, of someone like Whitaker Hart. If he's got the talent to match the ambitions and the amateur pedigree that we know he has, you'd have to have him as a, a favourite going into Yeah, I, I, I just feel, for me, one of the biggest components you've got to have in boxing speed, and I feel Thomas Whitaker Hart adds that extra in speed. He's a very good counter puncher, punches very hard, good footwork, good offensively as he is defensively, so I just feel he's got everything in his favour to look good. Central area light heavyweight title on the line uh, between the champion uh, Mickey Ellison and the challenger Tom Whitaker Hart. Both fighters are ready to weigh in. Ladies and gentlemen, the official weigh-in continues as Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing is proud to present 
10 rounds for the Central Area Light Heavyweight Championship. And now making his way to the stage, please welcome the challenger. He's undefeated as a professional with a record of seven wins and no defeats. Three wins coming my way of knockout. Fighting out of Liverpool, England, please welcome Thomas Whitaker Hart. Whitaker Hart. And his opponent now making his way to the stage. His professional record, 13 wins, four defeats. He has five wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Darwin Lancashire. Please welcome the reigning and defending Central Area light heavyweight champion, Mickey Ellison. Ellison. And out of the scale, ladies and gentlemen, Thomas Whitaker Hart. One seventy four point eight for Thomas Whitaker Hart, one hundred and seventy four pounds, eight ounces for the undefeated Scouser. And now to the scale, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the reigning and defending Central Area light heavyweight champion Mickey Ellison. One seventy four point nine, one hundred and seventy four pounds, nine ounces for Mickey Ellison. Mickey Ellison v. Thomas Whitaker Hart. 10 rounds for the Central Area Light Heavyweight Championship Matchroom Boxing live on the zone from Wembley, London, England. Well, Mickey Ellison had to really graft to, to win that title over Jake Barton. Uh, I think it was July, uh, middle of the summer this year. Uh, it was a sixth or seventh round stoppage. In a, it was good, didn't it? It was. It was a good, it was a good fight, and he's going to need to be at his best to, to take because we know Tom Whitaker Hart can punch tall rangey. They're both quite tall rangey yeah. uh, fighters. It should be a good contest for the central area light heavyweight title to cap things off on before the bell. That will take us through to about seven o'clock, where the action begins with Gary Cully and Jowd Belmedi, both fighters now ready to weigh in. So let's not delay them any further. Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest, cracking little fight, two undefeated fighters, 10 rounds in the lightweight division. Now making his way to the stage, he is undefeated as a professional with a record of 16 wins and no defeats. He has three draws and seven wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Desiers Ero, France. Please welcome the undefeated former French lightweight champion, the Moroccan bombardier, Jaoul Belmoudi. Belmoudi. And his opponent now making his way to the stage. He's an undefeated Southpaw with a record of 14 wins, and no losses. He has eight wins coming by way of knockout. Proudly fighting out of Nace County, Kildare, Ireland. Here is the WBO European and the Irish national lightweight champion, the undefeated Gary, the Diva Cully. Cully. And out of the scale, Jaoul Belmadi. One thirty-six point three for Bel One hundred and thirty-six point three for Bel Moody. And out of the scale, the undefeated Irishman Gary, the Diva Cully. One thirty-five point eight for Gary the Diva Cully. One thirty-five point eight.
Cully versus Bill Moody. Ten rounds, lightweights, matchroom boxing, live on the zone, Wembley, London, England. Two undefeated fighters, Ireland v. France, Saturday night. Jal Bermelli said it's time to find out uh, about the Moroccan bomber. Can he land the bomb? So uh, tomorrow night against Gary Cully, who's fleet footed and coming off a brilliant win against Miguel Vasquez. Would ask Darren a question, but we're going to throw straight back uh, because Ellie Scottney has got the opportunity of her career so far. The European uh, title against the holder, Mary Romero, who's been in such brilliant form, uh, will be second on the bill on the zone tomorrow night at Wembley Arena, and both of them are ready uh, to weigh in. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our next contest is one I've been absolutely waiting to see. I can't wait to check it out. It should be a cracking fight. As Eddie Hearn presents 10 rounds for the European Super Bantamweight Championship. And now making her way to the stage, she's undefeated as a professional. Five fights, five victories. She is the 2017 Elite National Champion and the reigning and undefeated WBA Intercontinental Super Bantamweight Champion fighting out of Catford, London, England, Ellie. Scottney Scottney and her opponent now making her way to the stage her professional record eight wins two defeats two wins coming by way of knockout De Mathia Espana please welcome the reigning and defending European super bantamweight champion Mary Romero Romero And out of the scale, ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated Ellie Scottney. One twenty-one point five for Ellie Scottney. One hundred twenty-one pounds, five ounces for the undefeated Ellie Scottney. And out of the scale, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the reigning and defending European Super Bantamweight Champion, Mary Romero. One twenty point five, one hundred twenty pounds, five ounces for Mary Romero. One twenty point five. Romero v. Scottney, 10 rounds for the European Super Bantamweight Championship. Matchroom boxing live on the zone from Wembley, London, England. For me, with this one, Chris, I feel Ellie can make this very difficult if she plays into Romero's hands. She's got to be smart. Plenty of feints, loads of jabbing, use those feet, because if she plays into Romero's game plan, it can be a long, difficult night for her. European bantamweight title on the line, holder Romero, challenger, Scottney, second on the bill live on the zone before the return of the wrong football, big Johnny Fisher. He's in against Dominic Musil from the Czech Republic, and both guys are now ready to weigh in. Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest, six rounds in the heavyweight division. Now making his way to the stage, his professional record, seven wins, four defeats. He has five wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Znojma, Czech Republic, please welcome Dominic Musil. Musil. And now making his way to the stage, he is undefeated as a professional. Six fights, six victories, five of them coming my way of knockout. Fighting out of Romford, please welcome Johnny, the Romford Bull Fisher. Fisher. Now to the scale. 
Dominic Musil. Two sixty two point seven for Musil, two sixty two point seven for Dominic Musil. And out of the scale, the undefeated Romford Bull, Johnny Fisher. Two thirty three point four for Johnny Fisher, two thirty three point four for the Romford Bull. Fisher versus Musil. Six rounds, heavyweights, Saturday night, matchroom boxing live on the zone from Wembley, London, England. Big strong man Dominic Musil was taken out by David Adelaide, who had to be patient inside five rounds. Can the Ron Football do it any quicker? Big opportunity for him uh, to show what he's got. And then a huge opportunity for Jordan Gill, who defends his EBU European title against Kiko Martinez, a multiple time European champion, two time world champion, having just lost his belt at the end of last year. What has Martinez got left and what can Gill show after one of the comeback performances of the year against Kareem Worthy to win the title? A fascinating encounter in our chief support. Both fighters are ready to weigh in. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to weigh in. The chief support of the evening as Mr. Eddie Hearn from Matchroom Boxing is proud to present 12 rounds for the European Featherweight Championship and the IBF World Title Eliminator. And now making his way to the stage, please welcome on Saturday night, he'll be the challenger. 43 victories, 11 defeats, two draws. He has 30 big wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the former two-division world champion presentando de Alicante, Comunidad Valenciana, España. Please welcome Kiko La Sensación Martinez. Martinez. And his opponent now making his way to the stage. He is the defending European champion. His professional record, 27 victories, one defeat, one draw, with eight wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the former Commonwealth and WBA international featherweight champion and the reigning and defending European featherweight champion fighting out of Chatteris, England, Jordan, the thrill game. Gil. And now to the scale, Kiko La Sensacion Martinez. One twenty four point eight for Kiko La Sensacion Martinez, one twenty four point eight. And out of the scale, the defending European champion, Jordan, the Thrill Gill. One twenty-five and eight ounces for Jordan, the Thrill Gill, one twenty-five point eight for the defending European champion. Jordan, the Thrill Gill, Kiko, La Sensacion, Martinez. 
12 rounds for the European Featherweight Championship and the IBF World Title Eliminator. Matchroom Boxing, live on the zone, Wembley, London, England. Well, two men who know what it is like to find a, a staggering knockout, a clutch victory from the jaws of, of defeat. Look each other in the eye, youth against experience. But for Jordan Gill, he has really trodden a difficult path to get to where he's got to now. This is a must-win fight if he's to kick on and have world-level opportunities. This, this is fight of the night, yeah. no doubt. Gil Martinez, I just look at them stylistically, what they've done in the past, what's on the line, what is you know, the pot of gold for the winner, I just feel Styles are going to gel. It's going to be a barnstormer. Certainly is, and uh, that will set the table so nicely indeed for Casey Taylor, who comes off the back of uh, Women's Fight of the Year against Amanda Serrano and Madison Gregor at the beginning of the year. She retained her lightweight, undisputed world championships as she faces yet another mandatory challenger. Her 16th world title fight in Argentina's national champion, 19-0, undefeated Karen Caraballo. Our main event tomorrow night from Wembley Arena, live on The Zone. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's an absolute pleasure to welcome everybody here today to Wembley, London, England for the official weigh-in for our big night of fights taking place here on Saturday night. And it's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. And it'll be televised live around the world on the zone. And it's now time to weigh in the main event of the evening. Ten rounds of boxing for the undisputed lightweight championship of the world. And now making her way to the stage, please welcome the challenger. She is undefeated in her campaign as a professional with a record of 19 wins, no defeats, two wins coming by way of knockout. She is the undefeated South American super featherweight champion fighting out of Buenos Aires, Argentina. Here is Karen Burbuja Elizabeth Carbajal. Carbajal. And their opponent now making her way to the stage, needing no introduction to the world over. Her professional record, also a perfect one. 21 fights, 21 victories, six of them coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Bray County, Wicklow, Ireland. Here is the 2012 Olympic gold medalist and the revered and the beloved game-changing two-division reigning, defending, undefeated, and undisputed lightweight champion. Champion of the world, Katie Taylor! Taylor! Now to the scale, please welcome the challenger, Burbuja Karen Elizabeth Carbajal. One thirty-four point two for Karen Elizabeth Carbajal. One thirty-four point two. And now to the scale, the undisputed lightweight champion of the world, Katie Taylor. What 34.6 for the undefeated and the undisputed world champion, Katie Taylor.
Katie Taylor, Karen Elizabeth Carbajal, 10 rounds for the undisputed lightweight championship of the world. Matchroom boxing live on the zone, Wembley, London, England. It's a world title fight number 16 for Katie Taylor, number one for Karen Carabayal, the Argentinian national champion. The taller of the two, Ranger, she looks heavy-handed. Saw her again training on the pads last night in the gym. We saw her at the open workout earlier on this week, but you believe in every department. She's the inferior fighter, so pressure and a relentless work rate is going to have to be part of her tactics if she's to get anything from this fight. Yeah, I think sometimes you can nullify the, the opposition, uh, opposition's, I guess, threats by just getting close. She can't outbox oh, well, Katie Taylor. Man. She's going to have to get close. She's going to have to try and hustle her. I, I don't believe she can do so. This is all about Katie Taylor staying switched on, staying professional, getting up for this challenge. There are some huge fights looming, uh, the homecoming, etc. She's got to take care of business tomorrow night. And let's find out what fights that there may be looming ahead for, for Katie Taylor. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, spoke yeah. to Eddie Hearn at the open workout. He's in the studio with us. For, for this young lady, Eddie Hearn, 36 years of age now. Time is not on her side. Uh, she, she doesn't look any different to how she did when you signed her. But, of course, you've got to get the, any other big fight she wants to to have the next couple of years surely that's yeah, what happened you say that she doesn't look any I think she looks better physically than she does you said well, to her she's looking better shape now like, oh, and, and you even for the Serrano fight yeah. physically yeah, I'm talking yeah, about definition right here, in terms of her strength hand. like she's Pulled so into, dedicated yeah. to the sport well, what happened was I don't see the decline I mean coming off the back of the two mandatory defences before the Serrano okay. fight there were people okay. saying oh not sure about the performances, and then she goes and puts together the performance of her career against Serrano when it counted. Is that the concern, though, when yes, it's it against the opponent this, this that is, she doesn't know? You know? This is a great example. It's a defence she has to take care of against an undefeated fighter. Everyone expects her to win easily. You know, I think she wants to make a statement tomorrow night, and I think that she wants to move forward into 2023 for those big fights. Croke Park's a must. You know, I just feel like it'll be one of the greatest moments in Irish sport in history. And for me, Serrano's the fight. You know, we can... Had his day? Well, Friday yes, night. it could be. It could be lively. <laughs> Is there any but... issue with uh, what's going on with Jake Paul outside of the ring in potentially making that rematch or without getting really. away? I think that, you know, me and Jake will have various differences, but ultimately we want to make sure that the fighters get what they deserve. You know, for Amanda Serrano, sometimes you come off a defeat like that. I mean, it's quite unusual for the winner of that fight in a close fight to, to ask for the rematch, and that's what we were yeah. trying to do. I understand their mentality of going to try and be undisputed at 126, but when sort of common sense sinks in, sinks in and you think about the opportunities financially and from a legacy point of view to fight in front of 80,000 at Croke Park, I think Serrano will be pushing for this fight in 2023, um, and, and I believe it's the perfect fight. I mean, next week, this incredible run of female fights, yeah. for me, Cameron against McCaskill for the undisputed at 140 is an amazing fight. The winner of that could come out as a real front runner for Katie Taylor, you know, to become a two-time undisputed champion. Yeah. But you know, certainly the Serrano one is one that I would be confident to go on sale with, sell out on the first day, and just give Ireland a sporting occasion they'll never forget. Um, for Jordan Gill, a must-win fight if he's to push on for world level. Just to confirm, is this a guaranteed sort of mandatory spot for, for the winner of this fight, or would they still have to fight an eliminator before facing potentially the winner of Warrington and Luis Alberto Lopez? Pending what happens with that fight and when it takes place, and also the unifications with, with Wood, there's no guarantee that it'll be next for both guys, but it puts them in line to become mandatory when that is called. And I, you know, it's interesting to see Kiko Martinez coming over a pound yeah, under there. Yeah, you know, yeah. people told me that he was working hard this week he in looked, the gym. He looked I well, I thought. He, the open I, thought I mean, yeah. I thought he looked great. But it's interesting to see him come under. You know, he has been boxing at 130 pounds. We saw that fight against Elfa Barrett back down to featherweight and I always expected it to be really tough for him but facially I thought he looked good yep. you can tell Jordan Gill will always struggle to make 126 I think most featherweights do but he's going to be refueled nice and strong and, and, and heavy tomorrow night he looks in tremendous shape as well I think that's a brilliant fight I, do. I, I really do I mean it is fight of the night for me but I think we'll get what we think we'll get in that fight and of course same similar situation but in reverse for, for Ellie Scottney for her if she gets past Mary Romero that has to act as, a, as an eliminator for a world title she will have earned it if she wins tomorrow night yeah I think I think the, the winner of this fight will be called as the mandatory for Shanika Johnson, the IBF champion from Australia. We also have Malian Rivas, the WBA world champion, very, very good fighter. Um, 
it's time now for Ellie if she can get past Romero. I think it's going to be a tough fight. You know, we've seen Ellie in the past. She can be disciplined, but she also she loves to have a fight. Yeah. And Romero is, is very awkward, quite rough as well in there. She can punch a little bit. She's super fit. And I think Ellie will get dragged into that kind of fight. She'll enjoy it, but I don't know whether that's what Shane McGrigan will want, but I think it will happen. And this is, you know, she's had a really great run of matchmaking across Gianni, you know, yeah. across Roman and now Romero. That's like the perfect run great to prepare pre pre yourself for a world title. And if she's victorious tomorrow night, she'll get it. Great stuff. Eddie, thanks very much. Gary Carley, of course, and Johnny Fisher uh, join them on the main broadcast live on the zone from 7 o'clock. Tom Whittaker Hart and Mickey Ellison also contest the Central Area Light Heavyweight title on before the bell. All starts at 4.30 live on YouTube. Main card at 7 o'clock local time from Wembley Arena live on the zone tomorrow night. Katie Taylor defends her undisputed lightweight championship. Championship of the world against the undefeated Argentinian national champion Karen Karabayov. Eddie, Darren, and myself, thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow on Fight Night. At midnight, the 4th of October 2016. Hi, Eddie. I hope you don't mind me reaching out like this out of the blue. I've been seriously considering turning pro the last few months. I think I could do for women's pro boxing what I did for the amateur sport. The professional debut of Katie Taylor. I know that I won't be found short and grave.